Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day. We give God all the glory and honor, and it's been a while since I've been in front of you. Um, we took a trip to Bartell, Florida, and was able to have a worship service and a worship experience with one of our partner churches. And I would like to thank the partners out there, um, the Johnson in and um, Clarksville, Tennessee, for taking care of the van for us and Hallelujah. all of the people that support this ministry Hallelujah. here. Glory be to God. We're excited today. Um, you also, those that are just joining us, you can give on Cash App. You can give um, on PayPal. So just want you all not only to be blessed, but to also be a blessing. Extreme, extreme, extreme motherhood, extreme motherhood. I'm talking about motherhood that goes beyond just having a baby. I'm, I'm talking about extreme motherhood. I'm, when growing up in, in the projects, um, we used to play a lot of games. Um, we used to play uh, uh, on the monkey bars and try to pull each other down. And we used to play pick up and run. And the person that get the ball tried to kill you. And we used to try to write jokes on each other to make each other laugh, but one thing we didn't do was play the dozen. I don't know why they call, call it play the dozen, to talk about each other's mother. It seemed like we was able to do everything else but talk about each other's mother, whether we had a good mother or whether we had a bad mother. One thing that we did not play was the dozen, to be able to talk about each other mother and on this mother's day that there are so many different emotions and so many different circumstances and situation exists there are there are expected mothers there are mothers that are seasonal mothers where they have had the kid and and, and now they're concerned about their kids there, there are mothers that have even lost their kids there, there are also kids that have lost their there's a lot of extreme emotions going on on this Mother's Day. So we, we, we come to just give you what the Lord is giving us. I, I, I come to tell you about Mother's Day. One thing about growing up with my mother and also my grandmother that uh, as children you had to go to church. Just like you breathe, you also had to go to church. Just like you played on the playground, you also had to go to church. Just like you went to school, you had to go to church. It's amazing to me how I can see so many people in Walmart, in the grocery store, in the salons. Uh, I can see them everywhere. People are not afraid to go anywhere now but the church. They, the only place people think they're going to catch COVID is in the church now. People are fine anywhere else. Matter of fact, a lot of people not even wear masks anymore. They, they're feeling so comfortable. They have already taken their shots. And, 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 and people are comfortable everywhere but serving Almighty God. And growing up, and growing up, when we had to go to church, it, it was one thing that was very simple with extreme motherhood that you didn't choose, but they chose for you that this day that you will serve the Lord. You will get up out of this bed, no matter how tired you are, no matter how late you stayed up, no matter where you went the night before, but they will choose for you this day. You will get up out of that bed. You will serve the Lord. Right. It, 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 a street mother was like, as for me, in my house, I, I don't know about anyone else's house, but anybody that's under my roof, as for me, in my house, uh -huh. we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. It, 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 that, 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 there was, my first point, there was a, a surrendering of your life uh -huh. to God that you 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 surrender your control and you you surrender your destiny 
of your life. You 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 gave it all to God, and and and, and, and I come to tell you that you 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 learn how to trust God. Amen. You don't always get what you deserve, but you usually get what you desire. The Bible said He gives you the desires uh -huh. of your heart. And, and, and then they put a desire in you to worship the Lord. They, they put a desire into you to want to pray. They gave a desire into you to give, even if you gave 10 cents. They put a desire in you for you to go in the house of God and to reverence him some kind of way. They put a desire for you to pray and and to give and they taught you how to be your brother's keeper and how to forgive one another and how to love one another and, and, and to love yourself as your neighbor uh -huh. I, I was taught how to, to go around the world and treat everybody I come in contact with just because I learned how to be a neighbor I was there when my mother didn't have some sugar and she was baking a cake. She didn't go to Walmart. She didn't go to the neighborhood store. She didn't go to Christie. She went to her neighbor. Extreme motherhood. The things that we learned be, 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 because we didn't have a choice back then, but, 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 but as for this day, we had to serve the Lord. And then they, they, they was working on training us. Uh, 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 that was Joshua 24, 15. But they was working on us, training us. And, and Proverbs 22 said, they were working on training us up. Okay, now. Train up a child in the way that he should go. When they get older, they, they shall not depart. They will not depart. And, and, and the Amplified said that uh, uh, with individual gifts and bending. Back then, people took a notice of their kids. You didn't just play all day, but there's a time you have to sit down and be still. There's time they observe certain gifting in you. They saw you was bent a certain way. They saw you was able, you was gifted a certain way. They noticed certain things about you. They didn't just live in the same house and they didn't know who you were or who you are. I'm talking about extreme motherhood. Extreme motherhood. That they, they begin to put certain things in front of you because they notice your, your individual gift or, or, or your individual bending. They start training you up, even as a child, the things that you would do as you got older. They took notice of you. It wasn't just, you weren't just around your mother, and, and, and even though my mother had 11 kids, she knew each one of us individually. She knew who would need more help, who would need a little help, and who would need practically no help. She knew where each other lie, each other eating, having. She knew us individually. I'm talking about a stream. Motherhood. I'm I'm talking about a stream motherhood that, that 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 they trained us in a way that we knew that our parents were special and that we was taught that children obey your parents in the Lord. See them as a representative of God. You say, Pastor, now, now, now you're going a little too far. Parents curse their kids out. Kids are cursing parents out. Saying that they hate each other. What are you teaching? I'm teaching the Bible. I'm teaching where we need to get back to. Yes. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. They are the representative of God in the earth. They are your ambassador. Well, what if they're wrong? You still respect them. Well, what if they get on my last nerve? You got to look for another one. <laughs> For this is generous and right. Honor, esteem, value that's precious. Your father and your mother. Yeah. It said this comes with a commandment. This comes with a promise. The first promise. 
He said that the one of the reasons why you might be going through what you're going through because you haven't learned to obey yes. your parents in the Lord. He said in verse 3 in the, uh, Ephesians 6, 3 he said that all may be well. Not some, but all may be well with you. That you may live not only a short time, but a long time upon the earth just by honoring me. Train them up. But well, Pastor, you just don't know. My baby looked good from the first minute she came out of me. Even before they wiped the stuff off of my baby. I love my child. Train them up. Train them up. Say, fathers, do not irritate. This is the Amplified. Or provoke your children to anger or to wrath. Do not aspirate them to resentment. But rear them tenderly and train them and discipline them and counsel them and admonish them in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Admonish them. The first thing I can tell you as a parent, my second point is that you may not know everything. You may not come from a household that, that came from loving God. You may not have come from a household where your mother even loved you. No one confirmed you. No one approved you. No one spoke highly of you. You may have been abandoned as a child. And now you find yourself as a mother. I come to tell you today, do what you already know God requires of you. You may not have all the information, but you have enough to start. My second point is do what God has all that, that, that you already know God requires of you. Do what you know that God has already required of you. And, and, and we're really coming from today, 1 Samuel chapter 1. We, 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 we're talking about a lady that has infertility, she had a difficult time producing, a difficult time conceiving. She, she had the inability to sustain. She, she, had a, she was considered unproductive. I'm talking about Hannah today. I'm talking about that there was a situation that in, in 1 Samuel, it, it talks about Hannah said that that, 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 that uh, um, he had two wives, Elkanah. He, 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 he had two wives. One was named Hannah and the other was Panana. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And, 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 and it said that Panana, Panana, she had many children. But Hannah had problems having kids. That she, 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 she didn't have a kid, any kids. And, 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 and yearly, the Bible tells us that they went up to worship. They went up to bring sacrifice in Shalom, and that's in verse 3. Yeah. That, that they, they went up before the Lord to worship, and, 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 and it said that Elkanah, that he gave his wife, both of them, and their family, a love offering, a, a, a portion. And, 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 but he said for Hannah, there was a certain love there. He gave her more. Even though the Lord had shut up her womb, there was a love there. But somehow that it, you, somehow we can focus on what we don't have more than what we have. And Hannah kept crying about not having a baby, and, and, and the other wife didn't make it any better because she kept provoking her, her inability to not have kids. And, 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 and the husband still, he's trying to tell her how much he loves her, but somehow we we're able to focus on what we don't have instead of what we have. Yeah. And, 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 and sometimes, you have to be able to find love even in your pain. Mm -hmm. wow, wow, wow. Sometimes you have to hold on to the love you have even though you are doing what you're doing. Sometimes even though you feel empty and barren, you still have to find some kind of way to connect to the love. 
sometime in life you got women that go after those that have dumped them, left them, that put them down and instead of being there for somebody that's trying to love them. Sometimes we're driven by pain instead of love. Sometimes we have experienced so much pain until sometimes we don't even love ourselves. And, 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 and this Hannah is in a, a, a certain situation in and, 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 and verse 5 it said, but Hannah had gave a word to portion for he loved Hannah. But the Lord shut up her her womb, he, but, but, but he loved Hannah, and and, 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 and and sometimes our focus on all wrong. If you're going to move forward in life, you have to focus on, on what's good, what is pleasant, what is of a good report. You can't keep trying to move forward focusing on what's wrong. Well, well, what if it's been a long time and I've been praying a long time and I've been waiting on the Lord. Well, when you're waiting on the Lord, point three is that wait in love and find someone to serve. While you're waiting on God to do something for you, you need to wait in love. You don't need to wait in bitterness. You don't need to wait in unforgiveness. You don't need to wait in strife. But you need to wait in love, finding someone to serve. Things seem to move a lot quicker, a lot better when you are out there exhibiting and expressing the will of God and the love of God and serving others. When you get your mind off yourself, yeah. things seem to move a lot faster. And you can't find self-worth in stuff. You can't find self-worth in a marriage or a baby, or a house, yeah. or a car, or money. Your self-worth comes from God, Amen. being made in the image of God. Amen. Nothing else. Amen. You'll know more or less whether you have no child or you have a, 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 a house full. Jesus. Your identity cannot be in a child or not having a child. And it's amazing to me how some people can see your pain and get joy out of it. But now, uh, um, it was amazing to me how she got so much joy out of bullying Hannah, provoking her. That's what uh, um, verse 6 said. And her uh, uh, adversary also provoked her sore for making her her fret. Because the Lord has shut up her womb. And as he did so year after year, she went up to the house of the Lord. She So she provoked her. Therefore she wept. She did not eat. And her husband kept trying to comfort her. Kept trying to encourage her. Somehow, some people think out of your sorrow, they can get joy. I don't know how people think that when God bless you, it's taken away from them. Some people look at life as a, a, a pie. If you get half of it, that means half of it is missing. But my God, it, 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 it's like a river uh, that flows. A river is a living water that flows from you, and it just continues to flow. So if you got a little bucket, he'll fill you up. If you got a big bucket, he'll fill you up. There's no ending to God. He don't have one cattle, but he has a thousand cattle on a hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know how people can ravish and other people shortcoming, and other people pain. You know, everybody's going through something, so if anything, you should encourage someone. You, you, you should lift someone up. You should build someone up. It, 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 you, you, you should try to bless someone. Yeah. Amen. And First Samuel, verse 9, 
And so, so Hannah rose up after they had eaten and shallow and after they had drunken. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon the seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was bit, she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and weep sore. And she vowed a vow. It's one thing to take a vow, but she, she, she was like a, a double vow. She vowed a vow and said unto the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt indeed look upon the affliction of thy handmaiden and, and remember me and forget not. Not forget thy handmaid. Don't forget me. But will give unto thy handmaid a man child. A man child. Then will give him unto the Lord all the days. Not someday, but all the days. Not someday, but all the days of his life. And, and, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And, 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 and I come to tell you that she began to pray. She began to pray. And, and the first thing I, I really want to say that she did what God requires of all of us. What is that, Pastor? She did it before she had it. She, matter of fact, she starts speaking and praying about a child. She, 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 see, I learned in college that how the human mind operates and how we think that we, we, we look upon words, but we also look upon images or pictures and that we connect an emotion to it and we have to do it over and over repetition. And that's where the scripture comes that when it says meditate, on the word day and night, that that's your prosper, have good success. And here she's praying. She she's using her word. She created an image. She she told him what she wanted, not a female, but she wanted a male. <laughs> and then she kept doing it. She had the repetition, but one thing she didn't have was the emotion. She had emotions of sorrow, but that's not how you receive from the Lord. You receive from the Lord from a certain type of emotion. Emotion of worship. Emotion of thanksgiving. An emotion of praise. Emotion that God is worthy to be praised. It's, it, it's an emotion that she, she, she tapped into the emotion after, and I'm just going to preach it now, after she came in contact with the man of God. The man of God spoke to her and told her to go in peace. And by her understanding what peace means, that means that you're living your best life. That means that nothing missing and nothing broken. That means that you're at rest, you're at peace, that God will provide everything that you ever need. So when she heard the word of the Lord from the man of God, she came in agreement with it. It said her countenance changed. She said, she, she stopped crying. She wiped her eyes and she began to eat. She came in agreement with the word of God. You can hear this word all day long. If you don't come in agreement with what you are hearing concerning you from the Lord, you won't go anywhere. Her whole continent shift. She didn't even have the baby. The Bible told us that she stopped worshiping God. She stopped worshiping God. Some things God haven't given us because he knows we won't give it back to him. Wow, 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 wow. So pastor, make it plain. Make it plain. Your child. Not Hannah, your child. Not Hannah, your child. Not Hannah, your child. Not Hannah, your child. Pastor, you're getting too personal now. That's what God wants. What are you carrying? What are you struggling with? What is God requiring of you today? God said, 
It was never your child in the beginning. I'm the one gave them to you. I just didn't take you through what Hannah went through, but I still gave it to you just like I gave it to her. Hannah, she knew. She took a vow. And she said it more than one time because she knew that when you can get attached to a baby that's living in you. You can get attached when you buy the crib and you paint the room and, and, and you decorate it before they even come. You can get attached when they lash themselves on you to, to get nerves, man. You can get attached when, when you burn them and you put them on your shoulder. He you know that you can get attached to them. To the point you never let them go. And God has called you today to do what Hannah did before she got the baby. Make a vow. A vow. I vow upon the vow that Lord I give them back to you. And that's what the Lord been waiting on. Because he can take care of better than you can take care of. He said, cast all, all your cares unto me because I care for you. Yeah. But Lord, you know, he's so handsome and she's so... You about to give me that, boy. <laughs> Glory to the king. That's why you're going through all you're going through now because you won't let him go. Wow. It was never designed for you to carry them. Wow. Give them to me. Give it to me. Yeah, but but I love you, Lord, and, and I give tithes and offerings, and, and I know the word, and I shout, give the boy to me. Amen. You better do it. But my kids are going. I'm going to tell you one more time. God is saying to you today, mothers, on Mother's Day, if you do nothing else, if you get nothing else from this sermon today, please give that boy, that girl, give them to God. You can't care for them like God can. You carry unnecessary stuff because you won't relinquish your ability to believe God and to trust God that he can take care of them better than you can. He said, I want a, a, a man child. Then I'll give him unto you. Lord, all the days of his life. And I think right about now is a good time to give him back. And she was carrying this unborn child in her spirit so heavenly and, and, until Eli thought she was drunk. Yeah, yeah. Because she kept speaking from her heart but in her mouth was moving but there was no voice. Her voice was not heard in verse 13. It say now Hannah spent speaking in her heart only her lips moved but her voice was not heard. Her voice was not heard. Now, it, it, it's amazing to me that Samuel mean heard of the Lord, though. Her voice was not heard by man. But it was heard of God. Right. Samuel mean heard of God. See, there are some things that God has already heard. He, you think you waiting on God. God is waiting on you to shout. You, 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 you think you don't have it because you can't see it. But you don't have it because you haven't shot. You haven't celebrated. You haven't worshipped. Wow, wow, wow. You think you're waiting on God. God is waiting on you to connect your emotion to your word. To the picture, the male child. To the words that you say. You, keep, you got repetition, but you don't have no emotional connection properly to what you're asking for. See, when you receive it by faith, you start celebrating. 
when, when, when you receive it by, by faith. In verse 12, it said, and it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord. Praying be, 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 be before the Lord. And, and she began to tell Eli, no, I'm not drunk. I'm just a woman of a sorrowful spirit. But see, with one thing she did when she was in pain. She was in deep pain. Yet she honored God even deeper. See, when you're in pain and you're in trouble, the, the best thing you can do is go on to the Lord. And that's what she did. The best thing you can do is go unto the Lord. You need this. this my point four is seek God in pain. Wow. It's amazing to me when people go through trouble, they go far away from God. Okay. That's the time you need to go to God. Hello. If anything, I, I, I mean, when things are going good, if you're going to pull away from it, that's the time to pull away. But when you go through hell and high water, you need to run to God. Amen. You need to seek God in pain. And, 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 and she began to be like a, a foreshadow of what God did. He gave his only begotten son. She, she gave her only be, 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 begotten son. And, 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 and another thing I want to point out that even though Eli misunderstood her, she still was able to keep the proper honor and respect that she was able to receive from the man of God. Just imagine your pastor calling you drunk. You don't left the church. <laughs> and don't grab as many other people. Do you believe, Pastor, that I was drunk in church? She knew what the man of God was carrying. She wouldn't move. She wouldn't leave. But she opened herself up to the man of God. Amen. With the man of God. Even though he was incorrect. Mm -hmm. She kept good relationship and, and good communication with him. And, 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 and he was able to speak over her life. Amen. When two or three are gathered in his name. They come to agreement. You don't have to be in the same place, but you have to just agree upon the same word. And he said, go in peace. Uh -huh. And the God of Israel grant thee that petition that thou had asked of him. And, 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 she, and she said in verse 18, let thy handmaid find grace or favor in thy sight. Yeah. She realized that the man of God was carrying something. She realized that the man of God, the prayers of the righteous avails much. She realized that she'd been praying all this long time and nothing happened, but she knew if the man of God came in agreement with what her request was, she knew it would come to pass. And she received it that way. She honored. She honored. Some people would have said, well, 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 he don't deserve honor if he think I'm drunk. Honor, she honor. And, and, and it said that the woman went her way. She did eat and her continence and, and, and no more sad. She was sad no more because she was able to re receive the word. And, and, and it said that they rose up in early, early in the morning, and worship before the Lord. See, if somebody tell you you going to win the lotto, you you nothing is going to change if you don't believe. But when you believe it, you hear not you going to, but you hear you already won. And when you hear like that, you start wiping your face and you are no longer sad and you start walking in the overflow. You start walking in the blessings of the Lord that make you rich and add no star. You start living your best life. She had no baby. But she started worshiping. She had no baby. You start worshiping. Some things you don't have because you haven't learned 
your worship days yet. You haven't given God thank you yet. You haven't told God thank you for your healing while you was in your pain. Well, do I wait till the pain stops? No. Do I wait till I get the baby before I worship? No. You worship now. You worship now. Her change took place when she was able to receive the, the word of God from the man of God. She was able to go in peace and realize that it was already done. It was already finished. Yeah. It was already. And the Bible says she conceived and, 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 and she weaned the child and she gave the child back to Eli. She gave the child back to e Eli. My, my, my point to you is, I'm going to give you two of them. Keep listening for God's voice yeah. in the word and the man or woman of God when they preach. Keep listening to the answer. Hear what God is saying to you. You, you're not there to judge whether somebody is a one or a ten. You, what you are there is to get from God what God is low downloading from heaven through them. You're there to get a situation that you're dealing with a solution to that situation. So you got to keep your ears open that you may be able to hear. Listen. That was point five. Keep listening for God's word. And my last point is keep keep the posture of prayer and praise. You want to pray, but also you want to give praise. You, you want to pray and you also want to give praise. And don't walk in strife. The Bible told us that she didn't get upset with her husband. She didn't get, get upset with, with his mistress. She didn't get upset with the priest. She kept focusing on God. Now anybody know it was, it was a challenge to be a mother and to give away your child pretty much at birth. Something that you've been wanting all your life. Physically, she had to disconnect. She had to take the crib down and the playpen and the jumper and the walker because she realized that she'll never use it again for that baby. So in the natural, she had to disconnect. Mentally, uh, uh, all the thoughts that she imagined her child growing up to be and, 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 and what he could be and what he would be, mentally, she had to disconnect. But spiritually, she stayed connected to God. She found the peace in God and God's ability to keep what he birthed. Do you believe he can do it for what you birth, mothers? Yeah. On this Mother's Day, I, 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 I mean, do you believe God has the ability to keep what he has birthed. Yeah. And she had a peace with God. She had a peace giving God back her child and, and, and believing God for the best for her child. She, 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 she had a peace that this is the right time to give him back. She didn't keep trying to hold on to him. You, you know, can, can, can he get, 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 get an adolescent? Can he get a, a teenager? Can he make it to 18 till he get grown? No, she had a peace with God. Where's your peace? Where's your peace, mother? Are you still trying to hold on to him? You already have done all you can do. Give them back. Give them. Well, 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 Pastor, what if he's 30 or uh, 40? Give them back. What if he's he 50 or uh, 60? Give them back. Give them back. For those that are out there where you're not saved. So, so that's, I'm not even saved. I, 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 how can I train up my kids? And 
How, I, 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 how can they honor me? So today is your day. The Bible said that if, if, if thou shalt believe in the Lord, then that thou shalt be saved. If thou confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart, thou shalt be saved. That's where you begin today. And then what you need to do is get your family together and, and that you all confess the thing, the same thing and find a Bible-believing church that God may be able to lead you and guide you and your family, and then you can say what Joshua said, what my mother said, what some other mothers out there are saying. I hear it all over the world now. I hear the Spirit of the Lord having people make up their mind and saying that as for me now, in my house, that we shall Serve the Lord. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. We wish you that you will continue to turn in, tune in next week. Be blessed. Happy Mother's Day. Get our boy back. Good God. Have a good day.